I'm Brooks Davis. I work for SRI International, and we've been uh, working with the University of Cambridge for uh, a little over a decade now on uh, the Cherry Project. So tell me a little bit about uh, the background and what, what Cherry involves. So Cherry, Cherry is, a, is a, hardware, a hardware feature um, that's portable across instruction set architectures uh, that provides spatial memory safety um, inherently by adding bounds to pointers. Um, and integrity to pointers. And then we can, using the properties of Cherry, we can implement temporal memory safety. So we can eliminate um, use after reallocation type errors. And then Cherry also makes it possible um, to provide extremely efficient compartmentalization. So orders of magnitude, more efficient domain switching um, between compartments than say uh, the process-based compartmentalization in your web browser. All right, and you mentioned that this has been in progress for a long time and is portable across different uh, ISAs. Um, can you sort of describe briefly what um, what ISAs have been targeted? Well, so we, we started out um, targeting MIPS. It was the, the open-ish 64-bit uh, architecture um, that was available uh, a decade ago. Um, and uh, so we started there, we ported FreeBSD to it, um, and that's CherryBSD, um, and then and we did that with uh, DARPA funding under the crash and MRC programs, um, where we were really trying to do a clean slate security um, changes. So the, the goal was if you could replace some major thing um, and make security greatly better, um, you know, what could you do? And Cherry was our idea. So um, yeah, so we ported Cherry BSD to that. And then with about, we had some continuing funding. And then about four years ago, uh, DARPA Sith started. And DARPA Sith um, was built was a similar idea of you know make a, a big leap forward in uh, technology um, in security technology, and uh, there we were targeting Risk Five, um, and that and that was all public. But then about a year or so ago, we got to announce that we'd actually been working with ARM since 2014 um, on uh, a new uh, on porting the. Uh, Porting Cherry to uh, the ARMv8 architecture, um, and the the manifestation of that is Morello, which uh, we just announced boards uh, in the last week and week we can have. Excellent. So I'd like to get to Morello in in just a moment, but uh, first I'd like to talk a little bit about Cherry BSD, and if you can kind of describe um, how that relates to the the FreeBSD project, um, what's uh, what's the same and what's different in Cherry BSD versus FreeBSD. Um, yeah, so so the, the big difference is that in Cherry BSD, um, all pointers in user space are uh, Cherry capabilities, which means they're unforgeable. They have uh, tightly set bounds, and we really implement the idea of least privilege, the principle of least privilege, at um, the pointer level in the in the program. So we we really express with the language um, the intent of the program, the programmer's intent through the language. Um, and take that all the way down to the hardware. So we eliminate lots of buffer overflows uh, for something timely. Um, we would eliminate virtually every step along the way of exploiting the recent uh, uh, uh vulnerability um, that sat in, in Unix for 14 years. There is no way that almost any of the bugs in the, in the system could, could have affect us. And then, so so all of user space has been pure has been what we call pure capability, where all pointers are capabilities for quite some time. A more recent addition, about two years ago, is that we also have a pure capability kernel, um, where all pointers in the kernel are our capabilities. Um, we've found and continue to find a number of very minor sort of bugs um, along the way. It turns out that, for instance, you can often forget to null terminate. Um, arrays of pointers um, because you'll hit a null sometime <laughs> um, you know, you, you, before you walk off of age boundary. So um, we've been bumping into some small things and uh, Jessica has been committing fixes lately um, as a result of our Morello breakup. Um, so uh, you said uh, committing some things into FreeBSD. So how, um, how does that process work for sort of um, as a downstream project um, bringing in new FreeBSD changes into Cherry BSD and bringing in um, changes from Cherry BSD back into FreeBSD. Um, so let's see. So, so the FreeBSD changes pr process, um, we recently had a, well, the last year or so we had a big stall. We finally, we're finally nearly caught up. Um, in an ideal world, we merge changes in about once a week. 
um, from uh, from FreeBSD mains, FreeBSD's main branch, and uh, we merge them. We merge them one change at a time in Git. So every every commit to the main line, we merge as a single merge um, to enable us to bisect changes because it's sometimes possible. And I think Ed was one of the first people to suffer from this uh, quite a long time ago as a consultant. Um, that uh, um, it'll be the case that you'll have a change that compiles and works, but something has changed. Um, and now it, well, now it no longer works, even though it compiles and, and seems like it should work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we do, we do that. Um, for the most part, that goes pretty well, although we have quite a lot of changes, especially uh, to support the, uh, the kernel. Uh, so, so there's it there. Um, our upstreaming strategy is pretty much, well, it's a bit in fits and starts. Um, but uh, generally, as we find changes that are general improvements, um, better, better expressiveness, um, better clarity in the code, we'll try to upstream those things. Also, just things where uh, the changes we need for Cherry make the system um, clearer, have clearer distinctions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as as FreeBSD, like any long running code base, some things were written uh, back, you know, when there was one architecture, and uh, Things evolve from there, and maybe not always the right way. So we've we we like to push cleanups when we can. Um, and sort of in in general or in in broad terms, um, what would how would you describe sort of the the scale or scope of changes? In, what makes Cherry be like? What is the 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 size of Cherry BSD's changes relative to FreeBSD? Um, let's see. I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me at the moment. Um, but uh, I think in the kernel, we're at a percent or two, and that's in terms of lines of lines of code change, that's quite high. And that's because the kernel is actually both a peer capability program, which requires some changes in structure to make sure that rather than manufacturing addresses out of nowhere, um, we derive pointers from other pointers. Um, that requires some changes, but hybrid takes a ton of changes because in the hybrid mode, some pointers, which is to say all pointers to the user space are capabilities. So that requires annotations to flow down through the code base. And that's, that's the source of lots of our changes. Um, in user space, I believe we're below 1%. Um, and a study recently done um, using Cherry BSD to bring up a very basic desktop stack um, ended up with, I think, 0.2% changes, um, possibly lower than that. So. Uh, very, I think 0.02% changes actually on a basic KDE stack. So, so relatively non-intrusive or very non-intrusive for, for your user land uh, applications. Yeah, for, so for, for, your, for your average developer, um, it's quite unintrusive. Um, mm -hmm. People writing systems code do more things that require change. Um, older Cartier code requires more change. Uh, kernels obviously have a lot more, more low level stuff. So there are more things that need small changes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then uh, let's get um, on to Morello because there's, uh, as you mentioned, there's been um, a pretty exciting recent announcement. So um, tell me a little bit about uh, what Morello entails. Yeah, so the, the Morello project is a project funded by the UK government um, to provide, uh, well, to, to break the deadlock um, for a new hardware feature. One of the problems with a big new hardware feature is that software people don't want to want to spend a lot of work, uh, characteristically don't want to spend a lot of work um, to support a piece of hardware that doesn't exist. And hardware people are reluctant to make massive changes that, that you know, where they have to do serious work to make the pipelines continue to function the way they want and whatnot. Um, they're reluctant to do that if they're not convinced the hardware people will do it. And, you know, any development team that's been around long enough has been burned once or twice where they, you know, did, implemented a big feature and software was like, eh, maybe not. Yeah. Um, so, so we don't, we, people are reluctant to make this big change. Um, and so we're trying to sort of break that, that barrier by um, the UK government funded this test chip along with ARM. So Morello is, takes the, the ARM uh, N1 CPU design um, that you'll see in things like Graviton um, or in the Oracle Computing Cloud um, and has added Cherry to it. So now we've got a, a real production superscalar uh, core with Cherry, Cherry features running it, I think 
one and a half, 1.5 gigahertz, which was the target frequency. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got real boards up and running. Excellent. Um, and so, um, uh, so how long has has it been? Um, has it been running uh, where we're at today? Well, so we got we got the first um, we got the first run of Cherry BSD uh, going in early December on hardware we had remote access to at ARM, mm -hmm. um, and we got first boards in our hands um, about a week and a half ago. Excellent. Uh, anything uh, interesting from the the, the the bring up? Is it uh, going according to plan, or is it uh, is it uh, a difficult um, slog? I think it's going it's going pretty smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. We had we've had uh, Andrea, Andy and Rosalind working for us for a long time, uh, making sure everything was in place. We had access to a in our model of the of the uh, system on chip, so that helped a lot. We did we did encounter some bugs. Um, here and there as we started bringing in more real device drivers. Um, and there's lots of subtle things we're trying to, we're, we're currently actually trying to understand how we can make sure that, for instance, device drivers don't have, you know, lack of terminated lists and things. Um, how, 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 can we, how can we make that maintainable without having to have a Morello board with that hardware in it? Yeah, so I think there, there are some open questions there that we're thinking about in terms of what can we do to make FreeBSD more robust in this regard? Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, how um, how widely available are there? Are they rather? Are people in the FreeBSD community uh, able to to buy one? Um, so you can't buy one. You, know, you can't you know go to a, go to Amazon and buy one. Um, but uh, you can contact your ARM rep, and uh, if you've got a project, you are likely to be able to get access to one. Um, the I know the foundation's supposed to be getting a couple of them. Um, University of Cambridge will have quite a few. Um, so, so the idea being developers that developers may well be able to find access. Uh, one actually one exciting recent development is that uh, uh, Andrew Turner recently got um, the Morel Cherry BSD running a peer capability kernel in user space booted in Beehive. So we're mm -hmm. going to be able to provide virtual access. Excellent. Uh, so there, it's it's unlikely that you'll be able to put one under your desk uh, as a, a FreeBSD community member, but um, but it's it's quite likely that through the foundation or through other ways, um, you will be able to get access to one and, and do some experimentation if if there's a um, a useful path to to do that. Yeah, I think there's definitely space there, and I, as far as I know, a, a reasonable number of boards aren't aren't currently allocated. So. Um, you'd probably be looking about a year out to get your hands on one mm -hmm. um, due to the somewhat hands-on manufacturing process. Is there anything else um, you think is worth mentioning in, in the overall Cherry uh, Morello, Cherry BSD arena? Uh, I could ask you about um, uh, temporal safety, um, perhaps. Sure. Yeah, so uh, temporal safety. Um, so one of the so you know Cher Cherry puts bounds on pointers and those are unforgeable and when you and they're checked every time you do a load, um, it doesn't have a classic property of mini capability systems that um, it's trivial to revoke a capability um, by removing it from a table somewhere because one of the key design points of Cherry is that there aren't any tables, um, so we want so that and there aren't isn't privileged manipulation of of capabilities because. You obviously don't want to be able to want don't want to have to call into the kernel every time you increment a pointer that would be insane um so uh, um so because so we needed to overcome that if we wanted to solve all these use after free problems so it turns out though that cherry does have the properties you need to be able to look at any piece of memory and say is this a pointer um because there is a there's a tag associated with the capability in memory you can check the tag when you say okay this is a pointer and also, we can see which allocation it belonged to. So if we have a list of allocations to revoke, we can reliably revoke every pointer in the system um, to that allocation, um, whether it's in registers, whether it's laying around on the stack um, after return or, or whatever. And so because we can identify that, um, our work on Cornucopia uh, allowed us to revoke capabilities efficiently. So we quarantine them after free, which is so they don't get you don't you can't get one back until we've revoked it and then periodically we will call a revoke which scans all of memory um, 
and uh, finds all the pointers that have been revoked. And then um, depending on the mode of operation, either sets them to null, clears their tag, um, there's a couple other options. But, uh, what, what sort of um, overhead does something like that have? So one of the problems with Cornucopia is that the actual scanning is not bad. It's, it's a few percent if you do it in a separate background thread. Um, where in the current implementation though, at some point you have to synchronize all the threads, cause them to enter the kernel and then do a final scan. And that the pause times on hardware were a bit long. Um, so we have some work in progress. Um, a recent blog from Microsoft Research talked about uh, the, the ongoing work there where we're changing things so that when we load a capability out of a page that hasn't been scanned, we make sure that we, we we intercept that, and if it's a capability that needs to be revoked, we revoke it before letting the kernel, let, letting the user space have it. And that should let us cut down dramatically on pause times, and uh, hopefully will be enough to improve performance uh, to the point that you won't have to carefully hide um, your revocation. Uh, we're also interested in the possibility of looking at places in uh, programs, especially interactive programs, where you can sensibly hide um, the cost of revocation, mm. um, where a small pause won't be noticeable, you're already waiting. <laughs>